can write about this. Cool. Beauty hacks from Bob. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Oh my God. The Style Council. Folks, welcome home. Another issue of Cooking with Blondes. Our very good friend Amber is back in the house today. Hey guys. And we are gonna do a French style soup. Now, if you're there in Marseille, we call this the Bouillabaisse, but of course they've got the whole title locked up on this thing. So this is not a Bouillabaisse, but this is a, almost a Bouillabaisse. We're not using conger eel, we're not using lionfish, scorpion fish, the things you might typically find in there. Um, because, well, here we are in America and uh, we have access to other fresh things and my mantra has long been to use the fresh food you've got, don't go sourcing things and chasing around town or driving to Chicago to try to find something. It doesn't make sense. You want to make something really good, really solid, really phenomenal flavors for yourself, for the people that you love, whatever the case might be. Um, but what we're going to start off with is real basic stock. So stock is like a broth. And all I've got going right now is just some water. I've got some shrimp shells. I've got some uh, a basic mirepoix. So I've got some celery, some carrots, some onion in there. Now we're going to get uh, a little bit more of the fishy kind of thing. This is a golden pompano that came off of Florida. What I really want on this, though, is just really the head portion more than anything. So I'm going to lop that guy off. I've already rinsed this off. We have some gills that are still in there right now. But for all intent and purpose, you just have a real nice little fish head. So. Because we're doing a fish sauce, I'm not concerned about the meat on this, but we certainly can throw this in as well. And I'm gonna push up our heat a little bit, and that's just gonna go ahead and simmer away for a moment or two or three. You just saw my face when you put the head in there, I'm just saying. Yeah, well, you gotta but put you know, the head somewhere. there's a lot of nutrients in there. I mean, there's people, there's stories about people getting uh, lost at sea, and when they get the fish, they'll eat the eyes and the, you know, all the parts of the fish. Well, so, eyes are special. I mean, we, could, we could go to Asia, you know, right now, or we yeah. could leave next week. And, we can sample all sorts of things that have different types of fish eye inside of them. And yep. at the end of that thing, you're gonna say, you know, this is pretty cool. Yeah. I wasn't sure to the front side, but you quite a taste of a little gelatinous -y kind of thing. Very good. In this other little pot here, we're just gonna take some of these. I want you to smash these guys. I got you. Mm-hmm. Oh, so a lot of garlic in here, but that again is the, uh, is the Mediterranean region where we've got this really complex flavor profile of big, dense flavors. We're going to start off with some extra virgin olive oil in the bottom of our pot. I'm going to be generous with this, much more than we typically would for sautéing, because we need to get some oil that's going to come into here. This dish, like so many foods, are better when they do have an oil content, a fat content. Look at gumbos, look at uh, chilies, look at all sorts of things that are just better when they're more viscous -y. You can never have too much uh, olive oil. Never have too much olive oil. I agree. Perfect. So after the garlic is in here, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna take uh, another knife and work on this onion right over here. Make sure I keep it on that side. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. And just thin little slices. They don't have to be perfect. We're not looking again for the uniformity. We are not cooking for the queen today, so we don't have to have perfect pieces. Onion's gonna go in there. Our garlic's gonna go in there. Uh, since we're doing French, I did bring in some leek today, uh, one of the unheralded <laughs> onion products, and I think it's marvelous. We're going to use leek, of course, so that last dinner on September 18th on the rooftop, making a vichyssoise. Vichyssoise is a cold leek and potato soup. So here we are. We're going to take our leek and toss it oh, in geez. with the onion, and I can take the garlic that Perfect. Amber has knocked down right here, and we're going to get that in there as well. And that's working away. While that uh, is going to get a little heat on it, I'm going to take these tomatoes that, unfortunately, I did not score from the farmer's market this morning. We were rained out. So I just went to our friendly produce house and got some tomatoes on the vine, but they smell they really good. Oh, yeah. Those tomato are good. Those are tomato good. Mm -hmm. I have a high sensitivity. sensitivity and, you know, everyone house. talks about that with you. You really know uh, a good tomato. You I do. are, uh, I do. you know. I'm a kind of sore. You are that. Yeah. All right, so let's just take these, and again, we don't have to be, uh, what I would do is I'd take off the crown first, and then I would just kind of cut them through like that, okay. and kind of like that. So spoon-sized pieces. And that's gonna go in our pot. And turn our speed down a little bit on this. How's this pop? Looks like lovely. Okay, perfect. Cool. There you go. Oh, yeah. I'm a fan of these bench knives. They just make it so much easier. And since we're going to take the crowns, yeah, that's yep. And since we're not going to use the crowns in the actual soup stew non bouillabaisse, we can toss them right here oh, in the okay. stock as well. 
Perfect. So well, you know, just there. like you know, re-energizing, taking uh, taking what we can from something else and repurposing it. But we'll get these last two knocked down as well because they just kind of deserve to be in here. And if you think about how this dish has evolved, which it has tremendously, when it was first made by the Greeks, because the Greeks really controlled the Mediterranean, there were no tomatoes. And then the Romans came in, and there were still no tomatoes. In fact, until about the 17th century, there were no tomatoes to be had and to be used. So uh, this dish was a really cool seafood dish of whatever the fishermen would have that they would bring in. And a lot of that was things that they couldn't otherwise sell. There wasn't a market for things like these big bony fish or something else where there's very little meat in, in relation to the amount of bone that they had. So they developed this as a soup, especially first to, form, to take care of their families. Right. And then at that point to you know, serve in restaurants as well. So yeah, that's, that's how this is. And now we have tomatoes and all sorts of really you know, better and finer products that are going on with this. So our stock has been working away here now for a little while. What I'd like to do, uh, Amber, I'd like to uh, drain this off because that's going to be a little sloppy. I'd like you to have a very important task of holding this thing. Oh, man, just that fish head has been, like, making me mm -hmm. um, interested this whole time. Uh-huh. Okay, so what am I doing, Bob? You're holding that, and you're going to cant yourself a little bit to the right. Yes. And maybe hold that at a slight angle oh, like okay. that. that's easy. Uh-huh. And then I'm going to do my best not to splash you. And sorry in advance well, if it happens that way. Hey, you know what? I worked in the kitchen for a while. I'm good. I burned off the pads long ago. Well, look at that. You know, you're so knowledgeable in all the histories of all the foods that you make, Bob. And, you know, um, question for you. Where do, do you know anything about leeks? Like, where do they come from? My, my son, he's always trying to buy, my older son, a leek for all the holidays. I'm like, what is up with the leeks? You know, so, I... I, I use leeks in a lot of things and now by the way we're just going to take our stock you see how nice and kind of you know it oh, yeah. looks a little bit murky right it's cloudy but that's all the goodness that comes off of the shrimp the shrimp shells obviously that pompano that's there and the other things that we had in here so uh this is not a clear stock and we're not going to clarify it we want it to have just these dense flavor components that are going on with that Fair. um getting back to that leek i mean uh there are any number of different onion onions that okay, we never think onion. about using it. <laughs> so it, it certainly is part of that okay. and it is a much more mild flavor than a traditional bulby kind of an onion would be okay. and not as much as like a shallot or a shallot is okay so i want you to take this just like this and work your way down this is a fennel and i mean okay, smell I'm learning it. a lot about my vegetables today smell it smell it what's it smell like oh man a little bit like licorice, maybe? Like a fresh licorice? That is, yes, that is what it is. And if you were to uh, to chew on that, go ahead and chew. <laughs> licorice. Licorice. Mm -hmm. If you're craving licorice and you want to be healthy, just go get a fennel. Mm -hmm. All right, my dear, take this down and uh, we're going to use it. Actually, we're going to do that part and then yep. we're going to take off the little green fronds. Fronds. And the little fronds, fronds. are going to go in here as well. Bob, I love cooking with you. I learned so much, not just about, you know, learning how to cook, which I, uh, like I said, my favorite thing to make is reservations, Bob. <laughs> so uh, now I can cook this for my family and my friends. But uh, you also know the history. And definitely, you are definitely a connoisseur of the taste. Hmm. Over here, I've just got yep. some flat leaf parsley, the Italian parsley if you prefer. Mm. I'm just pulling this apart. I'm not going to cut it down, so just torn. And oh it's just going to go I in there as well. I can't imagine what this is going to taste like right now, Bob. Uh, Look magic. At this. It's going to be magic. All right, okay. let's get this in there. All right. Oh my gosh. If the camera only had like a 4D type thing that you can smell this and taste it, it at the it same time. It does smell we're we're just gonna, delightful. We're going to get at that. So our big spoony type thing here. We are going to need more fluid in here, and we have a limited amount of stock, so we have two options. What we can do is you can add more money, more money, more water to our stock, and then drain that off, or just put more water into here. Either way, it's going to work. While I'm getting the water, how about if you uh, pull off the oh, little yeah. fronds? And I know stick you were in. talking about that, but I was uh, very excited about these uh, leeks, these fronds, this cooking experience with Bob. And those of you watching at home, I mean, you know. Feel free to take down notes as you're watching this. I mean, these are very powerful learning experiences. And I mean, when I come here, I'm taking this knowledge and I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it for life. 
also making more reservations <laughs> at Shakers. But no, this is a really cool place, Bob. I, man, thank you for providing this kind of place for the community and the world, and hopefully, you know. It's very nice you say that. If we had a, uh, yeah. if we have a mission statement, it's really to expose people yes. here in Hubble, Milwaukee to food and styles and things that you otherwise wouldn't be exposed to. Exactly. Um, so we have a, a really adventurous clientele that comes in here and has for over three decades. And it's, it's again, it's our mission to get them involved in different cocktails, different wines, and certainly different foodstuffs. Now getting back to this, uh, we've got a few interesting little things here you've not worked before with this. And these are, what are oh, these? Oh man, these are clams. And you know what, these are really healthy. I'm really, you know, I wish I could juggle right now. I got three, I'm ready. Okay, Bob, what do I do? We're gonna take them and gently put them inside here so they don't splash up in your face. Oh, that's it? That's it. Oh. That's okay. all you have to do. You're all gonna right. cook there. Oh, this is exciting. Uh huh. Not for them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, really, these are actually very heavy. I, I had no idea. I've never tried one of these before. Um, like I said, this is the most adventurous time that I get to have. Mm -hmm. Well, in my. No, now my the muscles. Daily life. Okay. So these mussels are black mussels, and these are from Prince Edward Island, which is as far north as you can go in a habitable area, which has a fishery. It's in Canada, and it is fed by the Atlantic Ocean. So nice, cold, crisp, clean waters, not those other nasty waters. So if the, uh, the way to tell if they're good or not is that if they're open and you tap them, they close like that, then they're good to use. So I did not know that. These are all good to use. So they're still alive. Still alive. <laughs> now we have some blue crab, and that could go in there as well. Okay, just dump it in. Just dump them Look in. Look at that. And a blue crab. Uh, that was one of your dinners that you had. Yep. Blue so swimming blue crabs. Yep. And knife around you. I'll let you do the honor. And uh, we're doing great here. So what I'm going to do is actually move this pot off of here, just a little bit warm. And uh, we're going to take uh, this new stock pot and move it right over here, oh. you know, closer to the camera. Look at this. And now I'm going to take this uh, salmon. I'm going to cut this in a couple of chunks because I like it to be a spoon size. While I'm doing that, you are going to take this. What do we have here, Amber? A Squidward. Well, no. <laughs> no, no. Even more than that, it's an octopus. Oh, it's a yes. baby Look octopusy. At that. Oh, wow. Uh huh. Well, it's not every day I get to be uh, this close to an octopus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. Uh, get your hands in there and play with that for a minute, and then that goes directly into here as well. All right. You, well, okay. All right. You want me to? Uh, I'm, I'm a proponent of the playing with your food. You okay. got to know what it feels like and smells like. You know what? Yeah, you're right. I'm just going part. in for it. I'm going in. Look at this. Look at this guy. Oh, under the dress. No, just kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. Okay. So just throw them all in there. Mm -hmm. Look at this guy. Oh my gosh. And these are not alive, Bob. Right. Just these kidding. are not alive. Totally just kidding. Right. Not anymore. Uh, um, you know, that actually looks very appetizing after it goes in the soup. By itself, a little suspicious. <laughs> Looking good, Bob. Wow, so now we've got this uh, lovely salmon. Typically, I don't use salmon. I use a sea bass or something like that. Any number, John Dory, any number of Mediterranean species. We have this in the house. It was just delivered, so, you know, fresh is best. Here mm -hmm. we go. Salmon has a nice oil content as well. It's just yeah. going to be brilliant. Now, we're really at a nice little point. We've got virtually everything we want. We've got to keep it in motion so it doesn't burn. Oh, look and at those octopuses. Yeah, there's, there's, wow. the protein sees up. Just like when you cook anything else, the protein sees and they get hot. Look right? at that. They're going to curl over like that. Uh huh. You can tell this is my first time. In, uh, no, no, not, no, no, one, right? no one got that message. <laughs> so um, over here, we're going to take Sorry. the saffron. So saffron, the most expensive spice in the world. There's two main types. One is from Persia, Iran. And the other is from Spain. These are from the crocuses of little flowers. They have to be hand-picked. Just imagine your, your entire livelihood is based upon you're going to this field and picking these little Very pestles out of there. there. All right, so I want about a tablespoon into there. All right, so, well, uh, tablespoon. you know me with uh, cooking Measurements, you're, well, you're... <laughs> I think this looks good, right? No, you need more, you need okay. more, more. I need more, yeah, because we love saffron here. We do. Especially as shakers. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, in fact, we should have a saffron roll because oh, then we yeah. could... Yeah. Uh -huh. I got saffron on my hands. I almost want to like eat it off my hands. And how's the smell? How's the smell? On your hands. Oh, why well, I'm smelling everything right now? Because saffron does make its way into some very high-end uh, colognes. So it does. It's almost it like does. being there. All right. So now what's going to happen is that this is just going to cook. It's going <laughs> to simmer here and cook. So bouillabaisse is to hit something with a, a hot, uh, a big boil to bouillabaisse. 
and we did that with our stock. And then the base kind of thing is a extraction of to base something to have a brazing concept going on. So hot heat initially, high temperature, and then let it cook slowly for a while. So this really has got about, in the real world, somewhere in the uh, 20 minute range yet to go. And it's one of those things you prepare and you know, once you get it going, it, it takes a little time to put this together and then you just let it cook. And then you've got this sumptuous dish with just magnificent flavors this, yes. that your family will enjoy. So these are starting to open up a little bit here. I uh -huh. see these are obviously opening yep. up. Oh, look at that. And our salmon has gone from red into pink, right? Nice. Kind of goes along with that wine you're drinking, the pink and open over there from oh, A yeah. to Z. Oh, yes. Cool. Looks amazing. I cannot right. wait to try that. Bob? So this is working, and this is too small. So we'll just take a lid like this one, retain the temperature, and keep it hot. Now while this is working away, we are going to make a rui. Rui. Ooh, Ooh fancy. Rui. <laughs> there's no one way to make rui, rui, just like there's not one way to make a bouillabaisse, so don't beat yourself up on that. Um, there's some cool cats on the Food Network that are using uh, egg yolk in this right now. Um, traditionally, it wasn't egg yolk, but again, whatever works for you is what works mm -hmm. for you. We're just gonna use some breadcrumbs, and uh, in this case, I'm using panko for a breadcrumb. And uh, the thing I like about this is that it is all from the white bread, so it's a crustless. And I think for the Rui, this is a preferable flavor profile for what I'm looking for. Now, along with that, we're gonna wanna get some lemon in here. So if you'd be so kind as to roll this guy and okay. cut it. So when, uh, when you cut lemons, is it like, is it better to roll them first? I mean... I think any citrus because you get more flavor out of it. That's a great question. Thanks okay, for asking. Yeah. Because you extract more flavor, the membrane breaks down a little bit because it's like cellulose sense. on the inside. Yeah. And it, they're big and juicy because you want to get the juice, right? Yes, you want that definitely. big juicy thing. I'm going to make some lemonade here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, would you like me to cut that up for you? Yeah, with the knifey thing is good. Okay. And is there any special way that you would like this, uh, like me to cut this? No, nope. Whatever you're comfortable with. I mean, oh. if you like doing it in halves and down, if you like doing quarters, whatever you want to do. Okay. Well, like I, everyone knows, I eat out a lot. So, uh, being behind the scenes, this is definitely the biggest, best opportunity, I'm telling you guys. Here we go. And then we'll, we'll get those uh, seeds out there in just one oh, yeah. moment, guys. Of course. All right. So um, from what I heard, I heard that the um, the more seeds, the more like they are considered juicing uh, lemons or oranges. Or well, such. they say a lot of things. Well, so, I mean, there's always seeds in them. You know, today oh, with, with the number of hybrids that are out, I don't know yep, if that's factual yep. anymore. So, uh, but that is certainly something that they used to say. Yep. So many great foods out there. Modern agriculture is all based on modern chemistry. So uh, who really knows what we're getting ourselves into sometimes? Exactly. exactly. So while that happens, we're going to clean off the, or get out the seeds rather, and yep. then that's going to go into our blender. And while I'm making the uh, composition mm -hmm. with, the, with the blender and like the breadcrumbs, a... how about a spoon or a fork? Mm -hmm. fork? Oh fork yeah, good. Cool. cool. You don't want to lose any of that juice. We don't want to lose the juice. Right. Well, we'll and I'm going to grab this here. beautiful blender. Again, I don't get paid by Vitamix to say it, but this is the best damn blender in the world. Ooh, Vitamix. We're dancing, Bob. Mm -hmm. You know, that music in the background is very good. Mm -hmm. Kind of goes with what we're making a little bit. Mm -hmm. A little bit. But that's what happens here at Shakers. I mean, we get unique. We, uh, we explore. Uh -huh. And we go on an adventure. Every, every taste here is an adventure. Oh, geez. Uh -huh. Come on. You know, this would be a good drinking game. Can you imagine? I, I could well imagine. <laughs> All right, get out there. So over here in a wonderful blender, I'm <laughs> just gonna take some extra virgin olive oil. Very nice. <laughs> a handful of garlic cloves. <laughs> and then a bunch of the panko, the breadcrumbs. Okay, so what exactly is this? You said we're making... Rui. I'm learning a lot of new words today, by the way. Uh, I practiced a little bit before I got here. Well. You're doing great. And here. You're doing great. <laughs> Love your addiction. Oh, perfect. The stuff Amber says. So, um, the Rui is just kind of a paste. Oh. And okay. it is going to go on top of bread. We're going to toast our bread, almost like a crostini. Going to smear this on top. And this will then go along with our bouillabaisse. And uh, that can just sit there and idle for a few minutes. I'll get some little roasted pepper that we have from earlier today. 
And will you be adding the pepper in here, Bob? I will be. Okay, wow. I will be. Definitely. And what's going to happen, it's going to turn that into a really cool orange. It's also going to round out the flavors quite a bit. And then I'm thinking we can probably, if we're so inclined, get ourselves maybe just a little bit more of this panko. I cannot wait to taste this. Just a little thicker. And the thickening will take place with the breadcrumbs. And what kind of bread do you use for the breadcrumbs? Again, this is panko. So panko, panko is Japanese breadcrumbs. Okay. And uh, what they do is they're very particular, as most Japanese things are. And they bust, um, they bust the bread in such a way that they don't get any crust in there. It's only going to be this really wonderful, this is not the panko. And it's going to be the really wonderful breadcrumb. Sorry, wrong container. Commercial kitchen, we have a lot of containers here. Okay. So you can play with this a little bit. Because you have everything the, here. Yep. I mean, whew. Get the consistency you want. So just uh, thicken this up a little bit. And it's gonna look like a paste. It's gonna be a real cool little paste. Get that outboard going. Ready to ski, here we are. All right, I'll clear this out of the way. Gonna move this over this way. Let's take a fast look at our soup to see how that's working. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. So you see that the mussels have opened up. So it is cooked. Okay, Maybe so do you, do you leave those in there? Yep. Okay, all right. And this is one of those very hands-on kind of dishes. What does he mean by that? Well, it's interactive. So now we're gonna take some shrimp and put some shrimp on the top of this as well. Huh. And that'll complete what we're doing for any of the proteins or anything else here. Wow, I'm, I don't even think I've ever seen anything like this. So if I were to go, um, where, where would I find this kind of dish? You said in... France, in the southern France, France in Marseille. Okay, so okay. we should book a flight and we should go there next week. All right, good. Good. I'm on it, Bob. Of course you are. <laughs> and um, right before and we, we get ready to... we can because you know yours is going to be top notch. Well, no, but they've got the freshest seafoods right there. That's true. Um, so this is going to work another 15 or 20 minutes. And we could cut away for a moment and then come back to the finished product if you like. Okay. Okay. Oh, another yeah, another glass of wine? Perfect. Let's go. Folks, be right back. Folks, so we have just a moment or two longer to go in the oven. And what we're doing is we're taking our bread. We've made like this little crostini. So all I've done is I've just taken some baguettes, actually. Amber has, the lovely Amber. Cut down the bread, and I just got a little dose of olive oil on top of that, stuck it in. We're about 450 to 500 degrees. Two or three minutes there. Going to bring that out. And then I'm going to take this, this lovely rui that Amber just made which is a garlic-based paste, garlic and breadcrumbs and a lot of olive oil and citric acid as well in the form of a lemon. And that's really all that's in there, but it really, man, it just, it's the jam that brings this whole bouillabaisse together. And frankly, our bouillabaisse is now done oh, wow. and ready to go. So we added a few more shrimp in there and a few more mussels in there just to round out the flavors because we already have a large gathering of people that want to get into this thing. And I'm just going to turn that off right now, and it's going to bring itself down, but it is ready and righteous to go. Now to bring out our bread. And one of the differences here that we do with the crostinis that we make for like a bruschetta or something like that is that we would, ro we would take a, uh, a garlic clove and we would hand rub each one of these. Because we have the rui, which is in essence garlic, that's uh, been mulched down, pulverized, along with olive oil and the lemon and some panko breadcrumbs we don't have to do that now these are hot and they'll cool for an instant right, right. which also gets them to firm up just a little bit firm is really good right oh yeah very nice oh my gosh that smells so good we need to make a perfume out of this bob we do i would wear it sure just say chew me <laughs> why not there you go all right so um we'll take a bowl kind of like uh not this one like uh, a bowl bowl okay that looks good and I'll get a ladle thingy. 
This is crazy ridiculously hot, by the way, so please exercise caution. What I've experienced uh, in, in parts of France is that they will literally provide this to you at the table with two separate things. You will have uh, the produce and the fish that's in one area, and then you've just got the stock, and it's kind of up to you to marry it together, almost like some, some East Asian dishes are. Um, but I think it's best when it just comes together as one homogenous thing. And though we've gone way afield from our flash in the pan one pot cooking, because we use two, and a few other ingredients and components as well, um, it, this is really a simple thing, because we just put it, it together, yeah, and then it definitely. cooks, right? So you've got one more task, and I want you to take something like this cheese peeler right here, and peel some of this, get some thin orange on there, and we're actually gonna put a little bit in the bottom of this, but then we're gonna take some, we're gonna cut it really super fine, and stick it into here as well. So well, you've done you this know, before. Uh, well, I have, well, I have not. I mean, Bobby, you're just making me a professional. You're, you're a natural. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna take this little section right here, and we're just gonna oh. cut this down. Oh, that's gonna be bursting with flavor. I can just tell. So I want to get the essential oils to this orange without getting like orange juice Ooh. into there. I love it. And that's going to go right into there. Oh, I didn't expect that, Bob. Yes. There you go. You might have said it, but I'm so in awe of everything going on <laughs> here that I'm like, yeah, I like it. And these larger pieces, we just want to get into our pan and we'll take a little bit of the orange peel on the perimeter as well. Because yeah. as you get this to your nose, you're going to get this big waft of the orange peel, and I think it's going to be sensational. Yeah, and you know, Bobby, you're right. Like, this is very easy to make. I mean, literally, we um, found a whole bunch of pieces, put in the soup, and, I mean, it's more than that, of course. But, well, I mean, to serve to a group of people and have a big dinner and friends over, I mean, this is outstanding. Well, I think that's part of what we try to bring to the table all the time, yeah. is that you don't have to have these recipes. You follow rigorous directions and instructions. Yeah. You can create something yourself, just with a general guide of what you're doing here, and have phenomenal dishes that people will be just crazy over. So before we, we uh, ladle this in, I'd like you to take this, and you can see this is firmed up pretty nicely, and just get yourself some of the Rui. Rui, it's even fun to say. Yeah. Just on top of that. So when this is in here, we'll have like two or three of them on the side. Okay. And the plan is that you would use that to not just sop up the juices, these marvelous juices, you know, but to chew and really enjoy. And uh, there you go. Cool. And this goes on really nicely, actually. I mean, you know, I was, uh, it's definitely a, a thicker paste. Mm -hmm. And like we use, we use a Planko. And if you need to thicken it up, as Bob said, just add a few more Planko, Planko yep. Um, yep. bread pieces. And you know, sometimes we've used an anchovy in here as well, which has a real nice touch to it. I'm a fan of cooking with anchovies because there's a very uh, significant umami kind of component that goes along with that, so yeah. texture. And you, obviously, women have a heightened sense to pick up on textures. It's and a curse and a blessing. Scientific proof, of course. <laughs> but um, that's the kind of thing that you would respond to more, and I think it's just remarkable. So yeah. anyway, here's our little concept. Here's our little thingy. Because um, this is so crazy hot, we're just gonna bring this down first on the same level. And ergonomics are really an important part of this. I don't want people to hurt themselves. So you have choices here. We have a lot of tools to use. I think I'm going to use a pair of tongs initially to bring out some oh, yeah, of these things right. so we can get uh, our muscles. A little something for everything, or little, everyone little, in there. Little everybody. Yeah, especially a seafood lover like me. I have not done the octopus yet. Well, you are in for a treat. Oh, man. <laughs> a little nervous, not gonna lie. And here we have this wonderful clam. And there are myriad different uh, types of clams available. So some are obviously larger than others. Use the one that you like. Oh. And you can go down to little periwinkles and things as well. Look at that. And we're, I think we have an ample amount of seafood for that particular dish. What do you think? Yeah, oh yeah. This. So at that point, we would do something like this, and we just, you know, get our ladle into here, and we would just start uh, ladling. You know, if I went, like I said, when I, like if I went to a large dinner dinner party and this was served to me, I would just be in awe. This looks like, you know, a, I mean, this is high class. And it's interesting. We were talking about this in our filming segment yesterday as well. Is that many things that are considered to be high class now really began. I mean, just their, their food of the people, their food of the land. And it's what people had available for themselves to use and to cook with 
that made these just dynamic, large flavored profile things. And uh, you, you know, you're walking through this this field of crocus, this, this beautiful blue flower everywhere, and you decide, I'm just going to pick this little part out of this and cook with this and see what happens. Yeah. And it, it's amazing how we have evolved as a people. And then for this dish, you would just take the ruby on your little crostinis and you just kind of stick those on the side like that. And I like to take a little bit oh, more of the <laughs> of the fronds of our fennel. And you know, you might think it's fancy because it's little delicate fronds, but you it's know really what? not. The presentation is, I mean, it's it's like a show, it's an experience. Well, it's a There's show so once you pick it up right and present the camera with the boy base. So yes. if you don't mind, pick it up. Okay. We'll aim it this Ooh. way so they can see into that clam. Oh, wow, look at that. And well, okay, darling. Pick it up. Pick it up. Ooh. And in a moment, you're going to be. I'm honored right now. Look in at a me. moment, you'll oh be eating gosh. this up. Ooh. See this, guys? You can make this at home now with the um, simple yet very informative instructions from Bob and myself. And Amber, of course. Yes. All right, <laughs> so I want you to taste this if you don't okay. mind. <gasps> okay, as I was saying, I was a little nervous um, about. Uh, trying this before because I, I am very new to a lot of these different tastes. I never have had a clam. I never had octopus or the fish. Um, Can't wait yeah. to see you jump into those muscles. So. <laughs> okay, here we go. First of all, the broth, because of all the different tastes and how everything was boiled inside. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on right now. I mean, I'm like, wow, okay, what, what am I experiencing first? I mean, this is, this is definitely like very, it's very light, obviously, but it's also a very hearty feeling of a broth taste. So you got some of the heartiness coming in from the vegetables that are mixed together yes. with that olive oil, with that garlic, of course. And the light components you've got from that little orange zest that's there, um, obviously from the, the, the little anise kind of flavor from the fennel itself. And go for it, girl. Okay, Here we go. Okay, okay, okay. Her okay. first ever. Okay, okay, oh my God. <sighs> All right, okay, hold on. I, shall I eat the whole thing? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, um, might need to edit this out later. Hold on. <laughs> okay. All right. Here it goes. There you go. Amber's first octopus. Cool. Honestly, that was amazing. Now the muscle. Bob, where have I been? Um, Where have I been? Not you know, here, honestly, not here I mean, enough. yeah, I know. I, I'm coming here. And uh, what are your hours again? Mm -hmm. How many days a week are you Well, open? we open now uh, seven days a week, and oh, we open at 5 o'clock until 2 o'clock in the morning. Kitchens open usually until midnight. We do have our rooftop deck as well, and the final rooftop dinner of the year is September 18th. Four courses of exquisite things, and Amber's going to be here. That be by here. itself is worth the price of admission. Hey. And uh, you have rooms upstairs, so I can stay overnight if I, you know, eat too much um, octopus. The Dead Hooker's so, Penthouse, absolutely. Yeah, cool. um, okay, so I've never had this. This is the, the That's plant. a black mussel. Black mussel. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, okay. I have a lot of friends out there that can be like, Amber, try it. I'm trying it right now. Okay, Whew. all right, I'm gonna do a little. When you think about mussels that they have a multi-tiered, they have multi-tiered kind of a texture going on with them. The outer side is a little bit more leathery, but not leathery. Inside is very soft, and there's other things that are going on there as well. Honestly, that was just a party in my mouth. I'm not even kidding. Like I'm not even trying to like be nice or mean about that um, muscle. Muscle. It um, it was different. Honestly, that was very different. Um, like I said, my first time, first experience. I need to let it process. When I uh, am on my drive home, I'm gonna be like, you know what, I ate that. And you know what, it was good, I liked it. This is all about different experiences and experiencing uh, different parts of the world with different kind of tastes and everything. Smells, um, I mean, the... One last thing, everything. because okay. something that you're familiar with is a shrimp, so why don't you grab one of the shrimp and peel off that shell. Okay. And uh, get into it. Fancy, sorry, I didn't get my nails done. <laughs> I was telling Bob, I'm like, Bob, I didn't get my nails done today. But, you know, I mean, when you're cooking at home, like you guys will be about to do after you see this episode, you're going to want to make this for your friends and family mm -hmm. or make your reservations over here, especially for the 18th. Um, yeah, no need. Okay, so 
So um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, yes. you certainly ought to. Yes. Love subscribers. Okay. So um, should I just bite it like this? Yep. Or? Yep. Make it your own. <laughs> okay, guys. Here it goes. And remember, um, this shrimp is just not you know a cooked royal shrimp. This was cooked in with all the taste and the flavors and everything. Uh, what do we call this again? Bouillabaisse. Bouillabaisse. Or not bouillabaisse because it's not technically in France and Marseille. Okay, here we go. Mm. Okay. Now bouillabaisse uh, is, is the high point of French cuisine that comes out of Marseille. Marseille though had a long reputation for other things. It has long been as the, uh, the southernmost tip of France, the area where most of these skull duggery takes place. There's a huge Arab influence there as well. Um, you can get anything you want, no matter what your preference or proclivity, you'll find it in Marseille, just like the donkey shows in TJ. That's the kind of thing you'll find there. Uh, but they've, they've also, unfortunately, developed a, a reputation for uh, sex trade right now. And you know, any number of the refugees that are coming out of any of the war-torn areas throughout the Middle East uh, and Africa as well are being ported through Marseille and are being then sold. And, uh, you know, the world's changing, so take advantage of the best parts that you possibly can when you can. But a dish like this transcends many things, and I hope you take the time to enjoy this. Make it for yourself, make it for your family, those people you love, because it really is the kind of dish that they'll be thinking about you for a long period of time. Thanks for tuning in.